Good evening. We're thankful for each of you that are out there this evening. Welcome to the Wednesday night prayer service and uh, worship service. We're thankful for each of you and just um, excited to be able to be here tonight. We're thankful for just all the opportunities and uh, that God's given us. And we're all, uh, hopefully, I know it's getting hard, it's been challenging, but I know that you're in the Word and uh, thankful for that. We're going to, uh, tonight, have a song and uh, we're by Pete, and uh, then I'm going to preach after that. But first, we're going to pray. Lord God, we just thank you, and thank you for this, another opportunity to come to you in prayer. Lord, right now, we just pray for our service. We pray for the singing. We pray for the preaching. Most of all, Lord, we just pray if there's one watching, one that's undone, one that's not, um, not saved and born again uh, this evening, Lord, that they'll come to know you. Lord, for our church and for our, the, the saved in our church, Lord, we just pray for them. Lord, you will be with them in a mighty way. Lord, you will encourage them and show them and just allow them to know that how much we love them. Lord, we just, again, we thank you for the finished work of the cross. And most of all tonight, Lord, just bless this and bless every aspect of it tonight, Lord, in your precious and loving holy name. Amen. There's a window in the heaven. I can close my eyes and see. Where there are no worthy struggles And the soul there is set free Where the deaf and dumb are shouting And cause the blind can finally see All the crippled legs are dancing Cross that crystal sea. There's a special place in heaven where those unborn babies play and they're rocking on the mama whose chance has slipped away. All those unwanted children Say my daddy he's the king And there's smiles on all their faces As they spin around and sing Don't that sound like heaven Oh, 
treasured blood he shed. Don't that sound like heaven? Don't that sound like home? Where the Son of God is reigning, and those tears are finally gone. Don't that sound like heaven? Hey, don't that sound like home? Darkness there is overtaken by the light that's always on. Darkness there is overtaken. The light that's always on. Good evening, and again, thankful and glad you're you're here this evening and listening. Again, though this is strange, we're thankful for the opportunity. Thankful that um, we can we can bring it to you, a format to you this evening, and allow you to be able to be safe at home. We're going to be going through tonight and kind of looking at the Holy Week. And if you have your Bibles, if you want to go ahead and get them out and get ready, uh, we'll be in, um, we're going to bring a text out of Luke, the 22nd chapter, 42nd verse. Then we're going to be in John 18, 1 through 11, and Luke 22, 1 through 6. And then we'll be a couple other places, but those are the main places that we're going to be. Um, in that, we, we really just want to kind of walk through the Holy Week. We're Wednesday right now um, and kind of start on Sunday and kind of walk through where we're at this evening on this precious Holy Week. If I could give you a thought tonight is not my will, but thine be done during this Passion Week. This, some people call it Passion Week, this Holy Week. Let's read from Luke uh, 22nd chapter. The 42nd verse, a very familiar piece of scripture. And it says this, it's saying, Saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for allowing us to be able to come to you in prayer one more time. And, and Lord, we just pray that you will bless this word. You will bless this thought tonight. Lord, we're in this holy week, and we just right now, Lord, we want to take this time to be able to walk through and just know and appreciate what you have done, what you did, what you're going to do, and what's still to come. Lord, we just pray for our congregation tonight. Lord, you be with each of them. Lord, as they listen this evening, and Lord, as we come into this time, Lord, let us just draw closer to you in everything that we do. In your precious holy name, amen. This is Holy Week. Some call it the week, Passion Week. But um, this evening, it's a blessing to be able to preach And during this week. With everything going on, it, it can seem like um, the Holy Week is not, um, can't be what it, it should be or can be. But right now, you know, nothing does seem normal. And, uh, and it's not that uh, we can really do a whole lot about it. But what we can do is we can walk through this week and understand what was going on each day of Holy Week and what was going on as we walk through Holy Week. And during that, each day, we can praise His name through each of those days. Um, I was listening to Adrian Rogers this week and one of my favorite preachers of all time. And he kind of made an example. He talked about um, there was a student and an instructor in the plane, and the instructor was teaching the student um, how to to fly and uh, he was coming in for final approach getting ready to land and the instructor said well it's time to land the plane and um, okay well it came in and it was bumpy it was a bumpy landing and the instructor looked at the student and said that was the worst landing that I've ever had a student do and the student looked and said well I thought you were going to land the plane and there's kind of a truth to this is that sometimes we we don't know who's in control all right, and a lot of things in the world, we 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 kind of come to that conclusion. But tonight, as born again Christians, we know who's in control. Like I said the other night, and it's been said many times, this is no surprise to our God. 
He knows what's going on. And just like that example, um, it teaches us as Christians that we should be calm. Um, we should be calm. We should be collective. We should be prepared. And today I'm going to walk through Holy Week. I'm going to I'm try my best to come up through, probably we'll stop on Thursday where we're at today and or yet, you know, today and tomorrow um, in the Jewish calendar. We may talk about Friday a little bit, but we're going to start on Sunday and walk through and just look and see the amazing amazing week that allows us to remember why we are born again and that we're saved. You know, it's important, I think, to understand that we're going to look at this guide. We're going to kind of guide ourselves through it and, and kind of look and see kind of where we're at today. You know, Easter or Resurrection Sunday is not just a day. It is a, it's a season but it's even more than that. It's a, it's a, it's a time. It's a season that, that, that through the day you were born again and you were saved and through this week, it's a way of life. That's what changed. During this Holy Week, it allowed us to have a way of life that changed our life. You know, Sunday, we started with um, Palm Sunday. It's a week prior to, to Easter. And this year, it was April the 1st. And, you know, as we read and we listened to different sermons um, about that day it was a celebration of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And uh, we, um, we read in, in Luke, the 19th chapter, 28 through 42, and I'm not going to go there, but if you want to, you can read it. it, it it's, it's Hosanna to the Son of David. It's Hosanna in the highest. Um, they were the, they're waving the palms, and you know what? They were coming in, and they were... Uh, praising the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And as they came in, you know what? I, I reflected this week that how often do we praise God for, the, for Him coming into our life? That day, he, he started a journey to be able to, for you and me, to be born again, to be saved. How many times, I reflected this week, do I just thank Him and praise Him for that? You know, the, that night, uh, many scholars, and I might say that quite a bit as I read different people, they, they really believe that he went to Bethany, which was on the southeastern slope of Mount of Olives, about two miles out of Jordan. And he probably spent the night there. And I may say this again, it was probably with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And, and, and it's kind of neat as you read in all these different scholars over the last couple of hundred years and even more than that, really truly have came to that conclusion. But on Monday, we see that he wakes up and, you know, comes in on, on Sunday, on Monday, Jesus cleanses the temple. We see in Luke 19 and 46, it says, saying to them, it is written, my house is a house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Jesus comes in, cleans the, 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 the temple out. He cleanses it. He found the money changers. They were, they were, he overturns the tables. There's, he, he's frustrated and, and, and rightfully so because they were profiting for man and not profiting for the souls of man. It was a day of our great frustration for our Savior. I believe that, you know, he just, he, he, had, he, he, he was just so frustrated with the heart of men. We see here that that Monday night, again, the scholars believe that he left back, went back a couple of miles from out of Jerusalem and spent the night in Bethany with his friends, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. When I reflected on this, I, I think about our body as a temple. What does Jesus need to cleanse? What does Jesus need to clean in our lives to truly be honoring him in our daily walk? You know, I, I thought about those first two days. There's a lot that went on. Then Tuesday, we come to a place where Jesus goes to the Mount of Olives. And on Tuesday morning, I kind of read through the Gospels and I've read through different scholars and kind of collected this. And it says, and this is kind of how I, I put it together. On Tuesday morning, Jesus and his disciples returned to Jerusalem. They passed the weathered fig tree on their way. You can study that. And Jesus spoke to his disciples about the importance of faith. It was like the fig tree had the leaves but had no fruit. You know, 
that's so true in our, our Christian walk today. So he's, he spoke to his disciples the importance of faith. Back to the temple, the religious leaders are upset at Jesus for establishing himself as a spiritual authority. They organized an ambush they, with the intent to place him under arrest. But Jesus evaded their traps and pronounced harsh judgment on them saying, he called them these things. He, he, he brought out you blinded guides. He, he said, you are like white, uh, whitewashed tombs, beautiful on the outside, but filled on the inside with dead people's bones and all sorts of impurities. Outwardly, you look like your righteous people, but inwardly, your hearts are filled with hypocrisy and lawlessness. Calls them sons of viper snakes. And he says, he says, how will you escape judgment? This is Matthew 23, 24 through 33. Pretty strong words, you know, on this Tuesday. And later that afternoon, Jesus left the city, went with his disciples to the Mount of Olives, which sits due east of the temple and overlooks Jerusalem. Here Jesus gave, scholars call it an Ovalet Discourse. It's a, it talks about the prophecy, about the upcoming destruction of Jerusalem, I believe, in around 70 AD, plus also um, in the second coming and, and the end of the age. He speaks as, as usual as he does in, in parables and talks about the end times and he talks about the second coming and the final judgment. <clears throat> he uses this time to teach and to remind the disciples what, of what's coming. Now, Tuesday, um, the end of the day, I thought as I was thinking about this and I thought about how much was going on, the busyness of, a of Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. And at the end of this, we come to one of the scriptures I gave you and out of Luke 22. And as we, we go through and all these things happen, and I can't give you everything that happened in those three days. I'm just trying to give you some highlights. You need to you go and read. But we see here that. Later that, later that evening, probably Tuesday, going into Wednesday morning, is whenever Judas Iscariot ne ne negotiated with the Sanhedrin to betray our Savior. You see in Luke 22, we'll start at verse 1. It says, Now the feast of the unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains. Now he might betray him unto him. And they were glad and convinced to give him money. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. You know, in this in this time right here, this is we always kind of talk about where G, where Judas betrayed Jesus in the garden. But here, this is for this is on probably Tuesday evening and Wednesday. He is he is he's met with them. He's he's got everything in plan. He's made some decisions in his life. You know, we do the same thing. We make decisions in our life that are right or wrong. He makes a decision here that is is that will sooner or later will put him in a very bad place. He makes this, this decision, and it all comes together. And after this tiring day, they, it all comes back to, together. And, and Judas, I, I want to shake my head, but you know what? It's easy for me, looking back 2,000 years, to do that. And I believe we learn later from this instance right here, that we learn later that this allows Jesus to remind everyone he was who he was, he has always been. Who he is. He was 100% man. He was 100% God. And who he will be, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So we go on to Wednesday and during the day on Wednesday. And it's, it's very interesting to, to really to study it out and, and to really to look at it and understand that it had been a busy three days and he was tired. They were tired. So they probably, the Bible really doesn't talk about the Wednesday during the day. Scholars really have come to the conclusion that 
it was a day of rest. They probably went back. It was getting ready to be the start of the Passover, which today will be the start of Passover, if I understand it correctly, at the end of this day at, the sun, at sunset. And all this is coming together. It was a, it was a day of rest. They went, probably went back to Bethany and was spending time with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And there was, they were resting. And I, because you know what? You've got to think. It had been an eventful three days. And Jesus knew what was coming. It was about the will of the Father. And he knew it must be done. And he went back to Bethany, I think, with his friends, knowing that Sunday's coming. He knew that he had a job to do. It was the will of the Father. He knew that Passover was coming. He had these things planned for Passover and for the Lord's Supper. And he came to a place where he, he, he needed rest. And he comes to this place that I believe starts part of the most somber and one of the hardest portions of of the of of this week of holy week at this point the holy week really takes a somber turn on thursday starting in that wednesday of rest going into thursday from bethany jesus had sent Peter and John to go out and, and go to the, to the uh, room, to um, upper room, to get the Passover ready, the feast ready. And that evening after sunset, Jesus washed the feet of his disciples as they prepared to share the Passover. By performing this humble act, and it's, a, it's something that we do at our church, um, it's a, an ordinance of our church, this humble white service, Jesus reminds us in this ceremony about being humble and how we're to treat each and every person. It's one of those things that we see that Jesus shared the, the feast of the Passover with his disciples saying, and, and this is this is so, so important. We, we go to Luke the 20, let's go to Luke 22, um, looking at verse 15 and 16. He says, and he said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it will be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He was eager to partake of this meal. He was eager to be around them. And just like we should be, we should be eager to be in the Word of God. The Word of God is how He speaks to us through there in prayer. It's how He, he speaks to us. He, he, he leads us and guides us. And at this point, He is getting ready to be the Lamb of God. Jesus was about to fulfill the meaning of Passover by giving His body to be broken and His blood to be shed in sacrifice. Freeing us from sin, freeing us from death, and allowing us... Every time that we celebrate and, and do remembrance of the Last Supper, which was established this night with bread and the juice, uh, through communion, we continually remember His sacrifice. Later, Jesus and the disciples left the upper room and went to the garden, the Gethsemane Garden, where Jesus prayed in agony and and. Luke's gospel says, and we're going to go there, is it was his sweat became great drops of blood. Luke 22, 39 through 46, we see this, this picture and it's seeing it come together. And, and it's important that we that we remember this and we understand that this is the reason why we do what we do on the, on, on the times that we have our Lord's Supper. Verse 39, um, and he came out and went, and he was wont to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, straightening him and being in agony he prayed more earnestly and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground and when he rose up from prayer and was 
come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. And if you look at some of the other Gospels, he went a couple times and they fell asleep every time. And then in verse 46, and we see, and we see Christ as he, he was in agony, and then he prayed to the Father, and then he knew what he had to do. Verse 46, and he said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. We still wonder today why temptation happens. We wonder in our own lives, you know, if temptation comes when we don't pray. Praying is so important to alleviate that in our lives, to drive that away. We see in this uh, just a the, the, the picture of the agony that, that came. And in Luke 22, 47, we, it goes into where Judas betrays Christ. I'm going to read just the first couple of verses, then we're going to go to John 18. Verse 47 says, And while he yet spake, behold, a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them, and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss. We see here a just the start of the downfall of Judas. And, and to see the, 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 the heartbreak is getting ready to come into his life. You know, we go to now go to, to John the 18th chapter. You know, and we can really kind of continue to drive home what bad decisions do in our lives. We see here in verse 1, it says, When Jesus had spoken these words, He went forth with His disciples over the brook of Sidon, where was a garden, into the which He entered, and His disciples. And Judas also was betrayed Him, knew the place that Jesus oftentimes resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, come thither with lanterns and tortures and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto him, Whom seek ye? They answered unto him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto him, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with him, as soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If there ye seek me, let there go their way. That the same might be fulfilled which he spake of them which thou gavest me, have I lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and smote the high priest's servant, cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, But put up thy sword into thy sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Powerful here in this piece of scripture here. Because we're seeing here in John, that in verse 8, he says, I am. We see it in verse 5. I am he. Verse 6. I am he. And when that I am, this is the I am that created the men that were coming after him. Um, this, is, this is the I am that could have destroyed them. He could have killed them. He could have done away with them. When he just said I am, they fell backwards and fell to the ground. This is the same I am that is going to go to a cross to save them and save you and to save me. Even Peter, you know, of course he stands up and Jesus even heals one of his enemy of the time. And Jesus, you know, knew right then the will of the Father. Peter, of course, thought he knew the will. He thought he knew, I'll stand for you. I'll do this. Of course, we know. Won't be long. Um, we go over to John, just the twenty seventh verse of John eighteen. It says, "Peter then denied him again, and immediately the cock crew." Peter loved him, and we know he did, and and what he had promised him. But these four trials they happen, and during the middle of that second trial, 
Peter already denies him. The will of the Father um, gave you and me a way of escape through a barren cross, an empty tomb, and a living Savior. Today, people do not want to believe uh, the next time He comes, His second coming, He will be a God of judgment. Uh, the Bible says that the evil men do not understand judgment. And we see in this scripture, we see building up here that in the second coming that there's going to be a God that comes that's going to have great judgment. Today people, like I said, don't believe the next time he'll come that there will be judgment. And people you know, will say, well, I will make a decision then. No, if, if the love and the blood of Christ don't save you, don't be foolish and don't be a fool and think that punishment will. It won't. He has given us a choice. He's given us a choice today. He is coming again. And it could be today. It could be tomorrow. It could be a hundred years. But today, you could pass from this life to eternity. Hebrews, the fourth chapter, the twelfth verse, says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing sunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and as discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It is not the sword of man that is going to fix the problems. It is the sword of the Lord, which is the word of God. In Revelation 19, 11 through 16, it says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And that white horse represents a general, a leader. And this is Christ. And he said, And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. This is the church. Those that are born again and saved. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, and with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on the, th on the thigh a name written. Listen to this. King of kings and Lord of lords. We see in this um, that he is coming back. And when he comes back, it's going to be of judgment. The first time he came as a babe, he came into this world sinless, lived sinless. And he, and he gave us a way of escape. He gave us a choice. He gave us a decision to make. Can we to be born again, to be saved? Listen to this. This is important. Hebrews 6 and 10 says, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward His name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. God is not unjust. He's not going to forget your hard work for Him and how you've shown love to other believers. And that is important this evening as we walk through this Holy Week and understand all the stages and all the aspects and all the things that, that we did and, and we came up to, it's important tonight to stop fighting with God. Stop fighting a war with God. If you're lost tonight, you're going to always, you're going to lose the battle. And, and you just got to come to a place where you say, I must be born again. I must be saved. I can't fix all the things of the world. I can't fix all the problems of the world. I can't fix this. I can't fix that. I, I got to quit fighting and know that he is going to come again. I don't know when it's going to happen. I, I, I don't know. It could be tomorrow. It could be 100 years now. I don't know. Uh, but you know what? Or I could pass away this evening and meet Jesus like that. It's so important tonight to stop fighting God. You know what? What is the will of Father in your life tonight? I thought about a boxer's reach is their strength. If you can stay away from somebody and you have a long reach, 
you can, you can beat the battle. But guess what? My arms are not long enough. My arms to, to battle God. I, I, I never can do that in the sense of I, I want to fight everything around me. Even the world, my arms are never going to be long enough. That's the reason why I must battle it with God. So I'm going to ask again, again, what is the will of the Father in your life tonight? Are you at peace with God? Are you at war with God? That's the important part. It is so important for you to grasp that tonight. Because you know what? I, the lost, listen to me. If you're lost here tonight, you go to Romans, the 10th chapter. I'll go there. And the, it starts in the ninth, ver, ninth verse. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth into righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture hath, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Tonight, listen to me. What is the will of the Father in your life? We see what Jesus Christ did. We know what the Savior did. Starting last week, he came in knowing he was coming to hostile territory. Went through. He knew his friends. He knew the people around him that he could stay with and do those things. He did the will of the Father step by step. Went to an old rugged cross for our sin. But he conquered death, hell, and the grave. And it's important to understand this evening that, you know what? If you're born again and you're saved tonight, what is the will of the Father in your life? What's he calling you to do during this t troubled time, during this hard time, during this situation? He has something for you to do during this holy week. I know it's hard. I know it's strange. I know it's stressful. But tonight, he has great plans for us. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for Holy Week. We thank you for this week. We thank you for just allowing us one more time to praise your name, to preach your word. We thank you for the songs. And Lord, as this next song plays, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that each person in their house, within our congregation tonight, will just take the time, will just sit, get down to a, their, in front of their couch or wherever, Lord, and just pray and say, Lord, I want your will in my life. I want you to direct me. I want you to guide me. Say, Lord, thank you for, for being who you were and who you are. And Lord, I, I think it's so important that we, that we grasp tonight that you are King of Kings. You are Lord of Lords. And Lord, let us praise your name tonight and thank you for that, for what you did on an old rugged cross. But that that tomb is empty, the throne is occupied, and I'm thankful tonight to be born again. Lord, pray, just bless our, our congregation, bless our people. In your precious and loving holy name, amen. Great.
I want to thank you for coming and listening to this evening and, and, and uh, being part of our outreach through our YouTube channel. And now we're going to go ahead and uh, take this time. If you have somebody that you want to pray for, someone that's special that you want to pray for, we want to take this time and go ahead and, and, and call out their name. If you have a soldier that you want to call out their name, please go ahead and do that now. And then we're going to read our soldiers' names as we've done for many, many years in this church and uh, do not want to um, change what we do. This is something very special. So we'll read through the names. If you have someone special, you can go ahead and call them out now. Then at the end of this, we will pray. We'll be having um, services. We'll be on YouTube this weekend also, and we'll um, be sending out more information about that as it comes. So let's go ahead and, and read. Linda Morris, Marty Phillips, Jerry Newman, David Mason, David Trebway, 130th Special Airlift, 229th Engineers, Billy Vaughn, Robert Pretty, Mike Newman, Davey Summers, Dale Reedy, Randy Williams, Ricky Phillips, Donnie Newman, Kevin Rowland, John Smith, 219th Special Forces, 157th Military Police, Joe Zachman, Pete Roach, Josh McClure, Brooks Ray, Mike Schaefer, Dustin Lines, John Perry, Paul Jones, David Scott, Mark Terry, Jason Cash, Mitch Chris Jr., Gary Hogan, Joshua McAllister, Scott Crum, Donnie Jones, Justin Wilcox, Chris Starcher, J.R. Lazar, Alex Ferrari, Travis Coleman, Zach Winters, Jackie Miller, Josh Miller, Gabe Garrison, Tony Lasuto, Jacob Summers, Adam Slayman, Luke Martin, Matt Young, Jared Prowse, Zach Call, Daniel Crumbly, Cam Jones, Katie Allen, Dalton Carruthers, Derek Foran, Chase Bricker, Tommy Kessler, Dennis Fester, Michael Webb, Keith Beller, Jared Trent, Dylan Williams, Scott Graydon, Jake Matthews, and 150th Calf. Let us pray. Lord God, we just thank you for allowing us to be able to come to you in prayer one more time. And Lord, we just pray right now, Lord, that you will just bless each and every serviceman and woman that was read ones that were called out, the special requests that were called out. But most of all right now, Lord, I pray, Lord, for our leaders. I pray for our president, our vice president, our senators, our, our representatives, our local um, mayors, and, and our governor, Lord. You know each and every one. So, Lord, I pray, Lord, right now, Lord, that you will bless them, that you will give them direction, give them the things that they need to know, direction, and, and who to talk to. And Lord, that we will be blessed through, the, through this. I know that you have something wonderful for us. I don't understand it all. But Lord, I know that you're, you're in it. We love you in your precious holy name. Amen.